Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for my first ever Prime video review, and today I'm going to be talking about Jackpot. Jackpot is an American action comedy that tells the story of Katie Kim, a former child actress who leaves Detroit to try and make a comeback for her acting career in futuristic Los Angeles. Unbeknownst to her though, she ends up enrolling in a state lottery where anyone who kills the winner within a limited time will receive over $3 billion, and Katie ends up becoming the winner. While the entire city is after her, not all hope is lost, as a mercenary bodyguard named Noel Cassidy offers to help Katie survive the allotted time she needs to get the money, along with a fee for his services. As such, the two do everything they can to survive the ordeal so Katie can claim the prize. I wanted to enjoy this movie a lot more than I did in the end, because it goes all out to be as entertaining as possible. The action scenes are great, and the comedy and acting does work in parts, but other times it doesn't, and the oddly paced narrative affects what could have been a subtle satire and makes it into a bit of a mess. The main character Katie, played by Aquafina, is sort of relatable in the sense that she's struggling to achieve her passion, but this side of her character doesn't come out as often as it should. It's frustrating that there's an arc to her character regarding her family background, and yet the movie rarely ever takes advantage of it. Outside of this though, Aquafina is enjoyable in her performance. She has some funny lines that are delivered well, and her character's show fighting background does give her some credibility with how she handles the action scenes. She has an annoying habit of talking too much at times when it's not necessary, but when it comes down to the entertainment aspect, she gets the job done. However, the other main character, Noel, played by John Cena, is easily the most delightful feature of this movie. He's a badass in every action scene he takes part in, which no doubt is helped by his pro wrestling background, and he carries himself well in and outside of them thanks to his comedic chops. His character doesn't really have a lot of background behind him, but Cena is so charismatic in the role that it doesn't matter all that much. It's hilarious to see the lengths he goes to being polite and considerate toward others, even as he inflicts pain upon those trying to kill Katie. And he just injects a lot of energy into the story, which I appreciated during the slower parts. The whole concept behind the movie's story regarding the lottery is certainly an interesting one. The idea is that Katie's coordinates are broadcasted every 15 minutes or so to the citizens of LA, so she and Noel are constantly on the run, and there are pros and cons that come with this approach. On one hand, the fact that an attack could happen anywhere at any time keeps the audience on their toes. It's a great way of keeping viewers hooked into the story, and it also encourages the pair to continue finding creative ways of fighting off or avoiding their attackers, which helped me stay further engaged. On the other hand though, after a while, these encounters with lottery crazed assailants start to get old. It's not much of a problem once the final act takes place, but for a good chunk of the first two acts, these two are almost always on the move and rarely stop to catch a breath. So it can get exhausting to watch when it's constantly stimulating the audience. I also thought the attackers were strange with how they behaved in their pursuit of Katie. Sometimes they'll help each other, and other times they'll attack each other. The latter would make more sense since there's only one person who can get credit for killing Katie, but because they're cooperating together too, their actions felt inconsistent with the logic of the concept. The futuristic setting of Los Angeles in the year 2030 is a fitting setting for the concept of the story. There's lots of ideas that could be used to highlight the vanity of the city and what people would do to fulfill it further if they had billions of dollars. And there is some of that, but not enough to stand out. When it gets right down to it, future LA isn't really all that different from LA today. There is something to appreciate about that in that it doesn't totally overdo the futuristic element, but aside from drones and cash currency being outdated, there's not much background information behind the already generic dystopia of LA, which affects the weight that the lottery money would have in the story. It also doesn't help that the supporting characters in the city are just plain bizarre and don't feel like real human beings. Perhaps this can be considered a point about LA and how most people outside of it don't behave like them, but that ignores the fact that there are level-headed people in the city too, so their behavior in general doesn't feel natural. Now, some of these characters were fun. Murray Hill is great as a spokesperson for the lottery, and there's some fun cameos thrown in too, like with Sean William Scott at the beginning as a lottery victim, and Stanley from the Office TV series appears as one of the few people sympathetic to Katie's predicament. But as enjoyable as they can be, they're not enough to overcome the ridiculousness of the other characters. The biggest saving grace for this movie are the action scenes. Like I hinted at earlier, there are a lot of these scenes, all of which are over the top with their use of props, vary from crazy brawl sequences to car chases, and feature surprisingly well choreographed stunts. There's rarely a dull moment whenever there's action on scene. The best thing about the action is that there's no guns involved, which is the rule surrounding the lottery that the victim can't be killed by one, so this forces the filmmakers to get creative with the elements of danger involved. There's always something different happening on screen with the action, which makes for an exciting experience. 
The comedy is also over the top like the action, but not in the best of ways. It often resorts to the lowest common denominator of foul language and slapstick related to the escapes of Katie and Noel, and the mishaps of their attackers. There's a few times where people will say a bad line and pause for silence to reflect how bad it is, but that by itself doesn't make it funny. It's also one of those modern comedies that can't help but resort to woke dialogue, like scenes where Katie quips about white men or gender pay gaps. Lines like this have their place in the right context, and thankfully they don't appear too often here, but it's tiresome to hear unnatural dialogue like this persist in comedies, because without the context, it's just pandering and not actually humorous. The pacing of the story is pretty quick due to the action, but it does eventually slow down a bit for the final act. This is where some much needed character development happens for the lead characters, even if it is a bit late. And Simu Liu's villainous role does shake things up a bit, albeit still being a tad predictable. I feel like this movie had more to say about its themes than how things turned out in the end. The subjects of materialism and the consequences of pursuing fame was pretty clear cut throughout, but it's not taken full advantage of. It only gives the most basic surface level observation of these themes, and I know it's meant to be just a fun action movie, but a little more substance would have gone a long way. Overall, Jackpot is a fairly fun action flick that does what it sets out to do, but not much more beyond that. If you like action comedies and want to see something totally ridiculous at a breakneck pace, you might enjoy checking this out. When it comes to its ability to entertain audiences, it's a bit of a mixed bag. The action scenes and the main character's chemistry are engaging, but the comedy and setting are lacking in execution. It's definitely not a jackpot for the comedy genre, but it is still a winner in some respects. What did you think about this movie? Did you enjoy how over the top it was, or was it not subtle enough for your liking? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Jackpot. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part where next time I review the French action comedy Nice Girls. Bye bye!